Welcome everyone, Dr. Tom here. We're going to start in just a second. Um, but before we do, I just want to make sure that the tech is working. So if you can hear my voice, actually, if you can see my slides. Now my slide, it's got, a, it's, it's got white down the left. It says digital meetup on the left and on the most of the screen, it's purple. And it says how to score over 70 in GAMSAT section one without boring yourself to death with poetry and literature and do it while working full time. If you can see that, type in yes into the chat box. Type in yes to the chat box if you can see what I just described. Excellent, lots of yeses coming through. Make sure you type in yes so that I know yours is working. Great, okay, cool. And uh, now I wanna say hello because I've often got people joining me from, I mean, always all over the country, but sometimes all over the world as well. So I wanna say hello. So go to that chat box and type in the city that you're calling in from so that I could say hello. Type in the city that you're calling in from so that I can say hello. All right, awesome. Lots of, lots of responses coming through. Let me just scroll up. All right, so welcome back from Brisbane. We've got Brianna from Brisbane too. Nora from, uh, from Paris. Welcome all the way from Paris. Um, we've got Jackson from uh, Perth. Zara from, and Samantha from Sydney. Uh, Kristen from Brisbane. Welcome, Kristen. Um, Lorena from Melbourne, Joshua from Townsville, Afan from Tasmania. Hello, Daniel from Sydney. We've got Bella from Western Sydney, Yahan from Perth. Welcome, Jasmine from Melbourne, as well as Adri and Cam. Welcome, Darshil from Brisbane. Welcome, you're not, not far from here. Um, Umnya from Melbourne, and we've got Adri from Warsaw. Well, welcome. That's my motherland. Um, Steph from Perth. Welcome, Jacob from Sydney, Terry from Brisbane, and Tenny. I don't know how to pronounce that. My apologies. But from Perth, awesome. All right, great. Welcome, everybody. Now. At the moment, the GAMSAT has been changing. Well, it's been changing over the last couple of years. Since COVID hit, the GAMSAT has been thrown into a state of the unknown where we don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, we kind of do, we kind of don't. But on a good day, GAMSAT is challenging and it's intimidating. But now that it's a digital exam, it'll be most likely in a computer lab or in a meeting room, but maybe not, depending on what happens with COVID. But um, essentially, at this point, we've kind of settled into a new normal with the exam. You know, COVID has kind of kicked up a stink here as well. And some things have changed. Some things haven't. Some things are really important for Section 1. And we're going to be talking about all of that today. In fact, what we're going to be talking on today's session about is we're going to do a bit of an update as to where the exam is now and what you can expect to happen in March and September and what that means for you. We're going to talk about how to understand any piece of, of, of literature or stimulus material that they give you in section one. And I don't care how bad your English or your interpretation skills, I'll show you how to interpret them. And um, we'll talk about how to answer even the most difficult section one questions I'll give you the three steps that you need to take right now in the lead up to March or even September um, so that you're ready for whatever they throw at you on the day of the exam. We'll talk about what to do instead of wasting your time reading widely. If you've read my emails, you know how I feel about reading widely. It's Don't do it. Um, we're going to talk about what to do instead and how to avoid doing endless practice questions which you get wrong anyway and make you feel like crap. But before I get into all of that, I kind of want to let you know what to expect from me. In terms of, firstly, my style, right? I'm, I'm more, it's going to be more of a casual webinar or, or digital meetup than what you might be used to. I'm running this from the home office. I've got a pair of shorts on and uh, my party shirt because hey, it's the Sunshine Coast and it's warm, so why not? Um, I swear occasionally, so if that bothers you, you might want to leave now. And I'm going to be kind of real with you and direct and honest. No fancy stuff today. You're going to get some terrible looking drawings, but they will teach you some important lessons and offer a few surprises as well. And I want this webinar to be interactive. 
more like a conversation, right? Rather than the, what you might be used to where, you know, I do all the talking, you browse on your, on your, on like three different devices and get bored and fall asleep, right? That's not the game we're going to play. I'm going to make it interactive, not just because I think interaction is good, but because the more you answer my questions, the more you tell me what's going on for you and what your problems are with this section, the more I can tailor the presentation and give you exactly what you need. So is that cool with you? If it is, go to the chat box and type in good to go. Type in good to go so that I know you're with me. And just because of the sheer number of people on the webinar today, we were overbooked again. We had uh, we, we got space for 99 and we had over 140 register. So because of the sheer number of people on the webinar today, that chat box, don't use the Q&A box, use the chat box. That chat box is how, it's going to be like our telephone, how we're going to communicate back and forth. So go over there and type in good to go so that I know you're with me. All right, tons of good to go is coming through. G2G says Jasmine. We got, a, we got a big smiley face from Bella. Awesome. Yep, G2G says Kirsten. Good to go. All right, lots of good to go. It's fantastic. Um, great. So now I'm going to cover a lot tonight. There's a lot to get through, and as you can imagine, right? And the idea here is to be as useful as I can to, to provide you with direction structure and support so that you can confidently move forward towards this march exam or even september and get into medicine and finally feel the relief of getting an offer because i can tell you that it's a great feeling to finally get that offer and that and it's just like oh, i'm finally in and so i know that every one of you here is who's listening is a bit different right you're all unique you're all different so what i've done today is because I've had to generalize a bit of the information to try and help everyone on the webinar, what I'm doing is at the end of today's session, I'm going to show you a system where you can take everything that we've talked about and apply it to your unique situation and get some extra help if you need it. So that's my game plan for today. Is that cool with you? Yes or yes? Type into the chat box, let me know. Yes or yes? Those are your two uh, options. Awesome. Lots of yes is coming through. Now, by the way, take lots of notes. If you don't have a pen and paper or a Google Doc, Word Doc, whatever the hell you want to use, get something where you can take notes. And remind me at the end. In, uh, at the end, I'm going to do a Q&A session where you can ask me all the questions you have about your section one or your preparation or whatever. But remind me at that point, and I'll show you how to get um, the, an essential reading list of things that you need to be comfortable with for section one. I'll show you how to get a recording of this. So for the people who are, who are asking, remind me at the end in the Q&A session, I'll show you how to get a recording. And I'll also give you, remind me at the end, and I'll give you a, a, a mini analysis test that'll, once you do it, it's for section one, once you do it, it'll spit out all your hidden weakness areas that you need to work on to, to, to get yourself sorted for March or even September. But remind me at the end and I'll show you how to do that. Now, Let's do a bit of an update to see where we're at with the GAMSAT and what you can expect with, uh, with, with September, what you need to prepare for. But before I do that, I've got a little question for you. I'm just going to launch this. It's on the screen now. How many times have you done the GAMSATs? This is anonymous, so type in your, select which one's most appropriate for you. You've never done it before? Once, twice, three or more times? Let me know. Select which one's... Uh, which one's correct for you it's anonymous It'll, and then i'll share the results in a second then you'll get to see who's on here and where i need to target the information so a few more seconds three two one all right you gotta be fast around here people share results all right as you can see 60 percent of you here have never done it before and 40 percent have done it at least once and in fact 15 have done it three or more times so you guys who are doing it for the first time, make sure you're paying attention to what I tell you here today so that you don't end up in that three or more times category. And if you are in that, or, and, and in fact, the two and once and twice sitters as, as well. And if you've done it three or more times, dude, let's, 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 let's do something about this. Today, I want to show you how to turn that around and make sure this is your last time. All right, so let's do that. So let's talk about 
where we're at with the game set. Now, if you maybe if you've never done it before, this will kind of show you what the fuss is about, what this new normal is, and what you can expect. And if you've done it before, then maybe you've missed some details. Maybe that's part of the reason why you're here and repeating it. Maybe it's not, but either way, it'll help you to better understand and prepare yourself. So what happened? Going back to March 2020. Now, I'm going to make this quick, right? But it, March 2020 is when the shit hit the fan with the GAMSAT and with COVID too, in fact. Where what happened? Can you imagine this? It's two weeks before the GAMSAT. On a Friday night, you get an email saying GAMSAT has been canceled this year. And you can imagine people, some people were like, yes, thank God. I was so screwed for that exam. I don't have to sit it now. While other people were pissed off because they had been studying their asses off. And they were like, I want to get this thing done. I'm ready. Let's get this over and done with. But they got this email saying GAMSAT was canceled because, you know, the way they used to run it is you'd have 2,000 people in a massive exam hall. Everyone just coughing, farting, sneezing all over each other, right? You can't do that anymore. So they canceled it. Then they, then a, a week or two later, they, they said, hey, it's going to be a, an at-home online exam, which was, it was a shit fight. It was, an, it was terrible. I mean, there was not much cheating going on. That's probably the thing that most people worry about, but they had some pretty advanced systems to prevent that. But it was more the technical issues because you're doing it at home. They needed a camera to be working, all sorts of things. And that was a much smaller condensed exam. Oh, I hit the mic. It was a much smaller condensed exam and it was at home. It was technical problems were, 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 were off the charts. So they didn't do that again. Then they did it the next year in, in, or the next exam in March, 2021. They did it in, um, in, in, in computer labs. So in September, 2020, they did it in a computer lab. So essentially like in meeting rooms with computers all set up. And that's essentially how they've done it since. Now, there've been a couple of locations where they've had to turn it into an at-home exam, where in September the last year, so the last exam, Melbourne people had to, and instead of doing it in a, in, a, in a meeting room or in a computer lab, they ended up having to do it at home. But everyone else in the country did it in a computer lab. So it's all kind of here, there, and everywhere. But essentially, you're going to be doing it either in a meeting room or in some kind of um, a, a, a room, essentially, even office building, or maybe even in ACER headquarters, uh, with a, with maybe anywhere from twenty to hundred people, and you're going to be they're going to give you the computer, and you're going to do it there and then. Um, so that's probably what's going to happen in September. Is this making sense, guys? Let me know by typing in yes. Are you following? Is this making sense? Can you see how things have changed and why they've changed and what's going to happen? Yeah. So you're going to be so what's really changed from the way the games that used to be run to what's happening now is that we used to, everyone in the country used to do it on the same day. They'd pick one day, you know, somewhere on the 23rd, 24th, 21st of March. It was usually, usually kind of second half of March and everyone would rock up around the country at the same time into their respective exam halls and do it on the one day. And then it was over. But now you do it over a window of about six days. Right, so you might do it on a Friday, whereas your mate does it on the following uh, Tuesday, right? But they change the questions around so that to prevent people, you know, whispering to their friends, you know, what came up, all that kind of stuff. So they 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 know better than that. But essentially, you're going to be doing it at different times over a six-day period. And how section one has changed? Well, there have been a few changes here. So here's what you got to know: it, it used to be. 75 questions before COVID it was 75 questions and over a hundred minutes and when you think about it that's as long as the current science section right then COVID hit and they took, took it down to 40 questions over 60 minutes can you imagine 40 questions that's so short and then they they increased it to 47 and now for the first time you guys in March are going to have 62 questions done over um, 92 minutes of writing time. So 62 questions, 92 minutes of writing time. Now, and this is uh, still, it's shorter than what it used to be, but it's kind of the, the longest it's been so far. Now, the other thing you got to know is that there are no annotations. So you can't underline or highlight or draw on the question sheet because it's on the screen, um, but you do have scrap paper and, 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 the, uh, and something to write on that scrap paper. 
All right, but you're going to have one, uh, two pieces of paper that are going to last you sections one and two. Um, and there's also a demo account that I highly recommend you play with if you haven't done it before. So that's section one. Um, now, I want to quickly cover sections two and three, and then we'll go into obviously the rest of the webinar on section one. But just quickly, so the essay section, for those who don't know, it's still two essays over 60 minutes and you get uh, five minutes reading time. There's no changes here to the timing or how it's marked. The only difference is that you type it instead of handwriting it. That's it, All right? Section three, well, section three is, uh, is, is shorter than what it used to be, right? It used to be 110 questions. Now it's only 75 questions, right? So put, putting that into context, it's, it seems like a long, thing but it's it's a lot shorter than what it used to be and again there are no annotations because you can't draw on the on the question sheet but you do have another two pieces of scrap paper to do your working out of and that's essentially the update that's what you can expect in march and september and look there's a lot to consider there and to prepare for and it gets a bit scary especially when you start to think of you know all the other stuff that's happening in your life all at the same time and as a result people have separated themselves into three groups. So your competition and probably yourself, you're in one of three groups. And this leads me to Dr. Tom's crappy drawing number one. So I'm just going to hook up my iPad and you are going to see the first picture that I have for you. So can you see that yellow cross on the screen on my iPad screen? If you can type in yes. Okay, great. Everyone type in yes. So I know it's working for you. If you haven't typed in, type it in. Lots of yes is coming through, but make sure you type it in so that I know it's working for you. Great. All right, cool. So three kinds of candidates. So, hold on. so if, uh, if this here is us right now, this is time and this is the GAMSAT. Be it in March or September, it's the same thing. Now you're gonna to need to listen carefully because you're gonna get my doctor handwriting here. So you might not be able to read it. So you're gonna to need to listen carefully to what I'm saying. Um, so the three kinds of groups, the, the first type of person is gonna do nothing to prepare. They're gonna complain about just about anything and everything. Oop. They're going to complain, oh, it's online, it's digital, there's paper, there's no paper, there's air, there's no air, I've got uni, I've got work, I've got kids, I've got COVID, I've got hemorrhoids, I've got a rash, whatever. They'll come up with anything and everything and they're not going to do anything. And, and considering that you're here, you're probably not in that situa situation unless after this webinar you decide to do nothing with your preparation, in which case you are. That's the first group. The second group are gonna do something to prepare. They're gonna just bounce along like this, right? They're gonna do something, maybe something they read on some group, some Facebook group or forum or what their mate told them or got a couple of tips or something. And they'll just do some practice questions and read a couple of things and they'll just do something. But what they'll find is that it's a bumpy ride, right? And they might not end up where they expect it to be because I think we can all agree that there are a lot of forces, a lot of situations, a lot of circumstances putting downward pressure on our performance at the moment. And so the people who are just doing something and hoping for the best, they might find that they're not where they were hoping to be. So that is not ideal. What is going on with my... I need to clean my iPad. All right, then the third group. The third group are gonna be going like this. It might look a little bit flat for a little while and a little bit scary, but then very soon they're gonna to start to go up, up, up. And then by the time we get here, they're cranking it out. And these guys and girls are doing it right. They're being strategic. They're studying in a way that's relevant to the GAMSAT. They're working on the right skills and what's actually being tested in section one. And there are people in my boot camp right now who are going like this. All right. So is this making sense? Are you guys following? Let me know by typing in yes. 
So I think we can agree that doing nothing is not an option, right? I mean, why are you here? If you're going to do nothing, you may as well go now and watch Netflix. Second group are doing something. Now this, yeah, it, again, it's not going to get you to where you want to be. And the ideal place is to be doing it right. Okay, so right now what I want to do is give you some practical, tactical things so that you can actually do it right. We'll give you, I'll give you the steps and the things to do right now. How does that sound? Does that sound, would that be helpful? Let me know by typing in yes. Okay, cool. Yes, is coming through. All right, how's the pace? Is it too fast, too slow, spot on? Let me know by typing in. How are you guys following? How's what's the pace like? Too fast, too slow, too good, all good, all good, all good. Says says Brianna, awesome, perfect. Says Nura, following, perfect. Okay, great, awesome. You're with me. So let this bring <laughs> this brings me to Dr. Tom's crappy drawing number two. Aren't you lucky? I <laughs> Don't worry, there are only two of them tonight. All right, so I was talking to my team and we're talking about what are the make or breaks? You know, what are the things that you absolutely need to get right for section one at this stage before the exam so that you get that, you know, score in the 70s? And it comes down to three things. Now, if you're not taking notes yet, this is the time to start, all right, because it's very noteworthy stuff right here. All right, so there are three main areas that you need to address. The first one are the principles. So principles of high quality section one preparation. All right, they haven't changed. They're still the same, All right? Secondly is, oh, whoops, let me lock that. So the second one is manage. Uh, so manage as in you need to manage what's going on in your life because you've got more than just GAMSAT going on you've got more than just section one going on right so you need to manage all of that to, to make progress and then you've got the online or the digital component of, of nature of this exam so you need to adapt there so there are three aspects to each of these things, all right? So starting with principles. So this is all about how you actually prepare because that hasn't changed. So the first thing is that you need to have the strategies. That says strategies. It's, again, listen to what I'm saying because you might not be able to read it. Um, this is not a comprehension exam, right? It's not about your knowledge of literature or poetry history. Right. This is about GAMSAT specific strategies that will help you to pull apart, understand and use any passage they'll give, they give you. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Secondly, are the practice questions. Now, by and large, as a general rule, people overdo it with the practice questions. All right. They've got this weird addiction that they just need more practice questions. But here's the, here's the truth. Write this down. Practice questions don't develop skills. They test them right? They test them. So if your practice questions are just, you're not improving or they're fluctuating and you're just doing more and more, well, it's because you're not actually developing any skills. You're just testing them. Just like at uni, you know, they don't give you exam after exam to help you get through the semester. No, they, they, they teach you the, the skills before they actually give you the exam. Same thing here. So just doing bucket loads of practice questions is not going to help Practice questions are useful, but done in a very specific way. And we'll talk about that too. Thirdly is timing. This is a quick section. There's a lot to read. Like if you haven't heard, the passages can be really long, like one to two pages of dense convoluted text. So you need to be able to quickly get through it and, and, and get through it in the timing. All right, moving right along to the, oh, oh, I hit the mic again. Moving right along to the uh, manage component. So this is all about managing all the moving pieces in your life, right? Because you can't just lock yourself away and do a GAMSAT study. Not everyone's that lucky. And even if you are, you got other things going on too in your life. So you might have work, you might have uni, you might have be, be you know, motivation, be struggling with motivation or self-doubt or fear of failure or procrastination. 
And there's, there's a lot going on. So we need to manage that so that you actually get through this, through your study. So the first part of this is the time, as in your how you allocate your time. You know, do you have enough time to prepare for March? Right. And the answer is yes, if you use it well. Right. So right now, GAMSAT, if you're doing March, GAMSAT should be your number one priority in life. If not, if not number one, then number two. If it's not, then you got to kind of reconsider why you're actually doing this, right? So, but you, you might have work, uni, kids, whatever, but you need to make the time to actually study. And if you use that time well in the way I'm going to show you in a second, you can get a great score in, in March. Now, next is your energy. Study is exhausting. I don't know about you, but even though you're just sitting there all day, it's mentally taxing and physically taxing. And, you know, they might have other stresses. You might not just be studying, but you got work, you got kids, all sorts of things going on. And I talk to my boot campers about this a lot, right? Because they get this as well. And it's about managing your energy and having what we call high performance habits or recharge habits, right? Because the people who, who get through this are not the people that have the energy, but the people that generate the energy to do the study, right? And then thirdly are the other sections of the exam. Because if you're screwing up section three, you're probably not going to study for section one, right? You're going to focus on that. But, so we need to address those as well. Now, on to the online component. Is this making sense, guys? Are you guys following? Let me know by typing in yes. Are you still with me? I'm going to have a drink while you guys type. Are you with me? Is this making sense? How's the pace? Yes, this is coming through. All right, awesome. So the online part. So this is all about getting ready for the, you know, obviously the online. But here's the thing you got to expect. There's only one thing you can expect to come up in the digital section one exam. And write this down. The only thing you can expect is the unexpected. <laughs> and it's funny when you say it like that, but it's 100% true because people get themselves into trouble when they're like, oh, I've done all the practice questions. I know what to expect. Bullshit. People go in there and it's unexpected. And they're like, oh my God, the game set's changed. Back to the drawing board, guys. We need to start. No, nah, man, it's, it's, it's doing what it's meant to be doing. It's unexpected. So the, how do you deal with that? Well, in terms of the online component, firstly, you need to have a way to get through the material as in the stimulus material right so um techniques and strategies and a flow of what you're going to read first second third how you're going to pull it apart because it's on a screen secondly is how are you going to um adapt to the screen and the paper version so how are you going to use the paper um, with no annotations um what do you how are you going to read through it and, and make the most of that kind of combination of, of paper and screen? And then thirdly is the transition. Transition from doing it all in paper versus doing it from a screen. Now, some of you might have, you know, digital prep materials, paper-based ones, but chances are you're used to doing it in paper version. You've probably got a, a textbook or some papers or things. Either way, you need to be able to transition to be able to use the paper, the, the scrap paper and the actual screen and be able to work through that effectively. So that's what the transition bit is about. Now, if you're able to address these things, the, manage, uh, the, the principles manage and online, that is how you can do well in this uh, in March now, a bit more specifically, if you can, uh, in this corner here, where pr the principles combine with the manage, if you can get that sorted, that is what I call high quality prep. Right? If you can manage everything that's going on in your life, and oops, what is that? No, I want to look. That looks way too fancy. Right. If you can get this bit done, then you are making progress. And if you can um, 
get comfortable with your digital version and apply the principles to it, you are adapting. All right. Now, and if you can get that all done, that is how you get to that 70 plus level. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Let me know by typing in yes or type in clear. Let's mix it up a bit. Get, getting bored of the yeses. Clear. Yep. Samantha, first one. Well done. Type in clear if that is clear and making sense. Type into the chat box, people, not the Q&A box. Um, awesome. Now, right now, in terms of general life, there are a lot of like pressures and forces, maybe people in your life who are putting downward pressure on you, who are saying, you know, you should wait, you should hide, you should shrink, you should be smaller, you should wait for a better time. But that's not your job right now. Your job is not to hide. It's not to wait for a better time because there is no better time. Life only gets more complicated. It's not to hide, but rather your job as a doctor or a future doctor and a medical student is to step up, to step forward, to step into the fear and the doubt and work through it. And the way you do that is by focusing on the principles, by addressing the strategies, the questions, using the questions correctly and getting your timing sorted. You need to manage the life and what's going on by prioritizing your time effectively, getting your energy levels up and addressing the other sections as well, and adapt to the online version of this exam by making sure that you can get through the materials, you have a way to manage the screen and the paper, and you can transition to it. Uh, because if the, you can do that, that is that is your job and that is how you get to that level of getting 70 plus. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to go into more depth on a couple of these areas. The main ones that I'm guessing you're probably wondering about, uh, what the hell are these strategies? All right. Who's wondering about that? How do I, What strategies do I need to be able to pull apart and understand the stimulus material? So we're going to cover that. We're going to talk about how to use the practice questions so that you're not wasting them and running through them like a doofus and, and, and wasting your time. And then we're going to talk about the material, how to understand it, how to work through it effectively. <clears throat> Does, would that be helpful? Let me know. Chances I probably will be. <laughs> All right, back to the slides then. I'm going to put away my beautiful Picasso-esque pictures. And let's get to the slideshow. Okay, cool. So that we've done that. All right. So to get into talking about, you know, strategies and questions, etc. The problem here is that there's a lot of what I what I believe is misinformation about section one, there's a lot of crap out there, you know, and if you spend any time online, you've probably read a dozen different opinions, and many of them are contradicting each other. And it's pulling your you're pulling your hair out, wondering how to actually prepare for this, right? So what I want to start off with is what I call my non-strategies. So I want to give you the things that don't work, right? I want to show you the stuff to not do, to stay away from because they don't help. And this is really useful because we can clear out all the crap and start off with a really solid, clear base to actually then build upon. Because if you use these non-strategies, right, these things that I'm about to share with you that you should not be doing, if you do them, you'll end up being super busy. You're going to do a lot. You're going to be running around like this little mouse on the wheel, being really busy, but not getting anywhere with your section one preparation or your skills. And you're going to end up getting into the exam and being shocked when, you, when you're there and you're still struggling to understand what the hell's in that in those passages, struggling with the poems and the long, the convoluted texts and the vocab, the whole lot, and that's a problem. On the other hand, if you avoid these non-strategies, you're going to be making progress all the way through, through to the exam because you're going to be focusing on the right things and using effective approaches that actually help. And that's actually, that's a really satisfying feeling. Believe it or not, when you're making progress and you're seeing your growth, it feels really good. As I can imagine this dog with a mouthful of bacon feels right now. Right? 
because it, it, it's really it, it's really kind of inspiring and motivating to be mo moving in the right direction. So write this down. Here are the things to avoid. If you're not already making notes, then what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> now get, get a notepad and pen or, or way to make notes. Close anything else you got open and write this down. These are the things to avoid, right? The first one is reading widely. You, can probably, you probably could have guessed I would have said that, right? Reading widely is the most useless thing you can do. What does that even mean, right? <laughs> what do you read? How much? Nobody knows. What do you do while reading? It? Nobody really knows, right? So anyone who tells you to read widely, don't listen to them or probably not even anything else they're telling you because what they're really saying is, dude, I don't know what to do. Just read a whole bunch of crap and hopefully something works out for you. That is not the approach we want to take. You don't have that kind of time from now until March or even September, right? You don't have that kind of time. So don't do that. Next one is just reading the paper, you know, reading the paper over a coffee. Now, it's not helpful. It's not effective. It's too vague, right? It's not specific enough. How do you know that it's actually going to apply on the day? And I've never seen a GAMSAT question that says, you know, what did you think of the latest Sydney Morning Herald article? Or the age, whatever, you know, whatever, pay, you're all at Brisbane times and no one's ever asked that, right? So don't do that. Uh, watching TED Talks. Look, I love TED Talks. They're great. They're fun. I kind of feel like I'm learning something, although I don't really remember much about it, like five minutes later. And, you know, it, it might kind of work for section two, depending on a few things, but it's not a useful approach for section one. Now, as I go through these, you're probably going to realize that you've been doing a whole bunch of these things. Um, and in that, if that's the case, well, then I'm glad you're here and you're learning it now. And you know, it's not your fault and you're not alone. And But you need to know the truth before it's too late. So I'm glad that you're here hearing this now. And we're going to talk about what to do in a second. All right. But let's keep going with these non-strategies. So the next one is watching a current affairs. I mean, that shit's depressing on a good day. <laughs> it's not good for your health. Don't do it. Next is luck praying or not preparing, right? It's the biggest exam potentially of your life. Well, up until now it is. And many people are not preparing for this section, right? Not a good approach. Um, hoping that your high school English skills are still working. <laughs> and look, even if they were, chances are it's been a few years since you've been in high school and you, yeah, you, your skills aren't there anymore. But even if they were, this is not a high school English exam, right? This is a postgraduate university level exam with some of the smartest people in the country. High school English skills ain't going to cut it. Reading novels, you know, fun stuff like The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, you know, whatever you're reading, you know, especially reading before bed as you doze off. Some people are like, oh, I'm tired, so I'll just read before bed. No, nah, that's not game set study. You know, firstly, you're not actually absorbing anything. You're just falling asleep but even just reading novels isn't relevant to the game set and next one you thought we were done there's there's more of this stuff because i tell you like there's a whole bunch of crap out there and people are wasting their time doing this so i'm, I'm glad that we're clearing the air so mcat verbal reasoning passages for those of you who know what that means you're studying for the wrong exam this is the gam set not the mcat and you know some of those questions might be useful but maybe like to 10% to, to of, the, of the section one. So it's not a not very useful on its own. Just doing the ACER booklets and leaving it at that. Look, the ACER booklets, again, they're useful, but they're not actually developing skills. They're testing them. And if that's all you do, well, you're just, you're not even leveling the playing field for yourself because everyone's doing the ACER booklets. You're not actually, you know, getting ahead. Oops. Yeah, and I think that's it. Yeah, there you have it right? That's a long list. There's a whole bunch of things there. And here's an example of someone who uses it. This is Ash. He joined our boot camp. And when someone joins our boot camp, either myself or my student support coach, we talk to them one-on-one -on -one and we get them started and get them on board and get them making progress quickly and effectively and introduce them to everything. And so I was speaking to Ash and I'll, he told me that he'd done the games that before he joined us. And I was like, all right, what did you do for section one? And he said that he used a handful of those techniques that I just went through. He started, but didn't finish any novels, books that he found fun and interesting, like The Hobbit. So nothing that actually comes up on the GAMSAT. 
and he read The Economist and a few newspapers over coffee and did a few MCAT reasoning passages. And he scored a 48. Now, if you're new to this, 48 is a terrible score. It's a fail. None of the universities are going to look at you. Even if you smash sections two and three, a 48 in section one will disqualify you from any medical school. So you need to get a score that is in the 70s or more. And so let's contrast him to Dong Zhu. Now, Dong Zhu, he is from China. And he's a great guy, super motivated. He was an engineer and he said that he didn't want to go back to China as an engineer. He wanted to go back as a doctor. And he tried the GAMSAT a couple of times and he kept struggling with section one. And what we did with him was, you know, chatting to him, we realized that, yeah, his English skills are, are quite poor. You know, he's, it's not his first language, probably not even his second, probably his third or fourth. And instead, he applied the techniques that I'm going to share with you in a second. And what happened is he, as you can see in the top there, Marie, who's my, who, who works on our team, who's also my wife, she said that he got two offers, one for Griffith, one for UQ, and he ended up um, getting into the University of Queensland. So he improved so much. So they went from failing to actually getting in to UQ after ditching all the non-strategies and applying what actually works. So I've got a question for you right now. Which of those non-strategies have you been using so far? I'm going to bring them up on the screen here. Which of these, I want you to type these into the chat box. Which of these have you been doing so far? Or which were you planning on doing if you haven't started yet? All right. Uh, Nur says none of them. So what have you been doing in that case? Have you been luck praying and not preparing? Uh, Tommy says all of them. Well, thank you for your honesty, Tommy. Uh, Kudar says all. Uh, Afan says N-O-N, -N, none. Oh, all of them? I don't, know. I don't understand what that means. So have you not been studying in that case? Lena says Asa booklets, Jacob, Jonty as well. Uh, and uh, Kirsten and Jada, Jade, um, uh, Bella reading widely and Asa booklets, Jasmine TED Talks, uh, Beck novels, TED Talks, current affairs, Joshua Asa booklets and reading widely, um, Jackson reading widely, just doing practice questions as a fun, Charlotte hoping my English skills are still working. Um, Sim Acer booklets. Um, Terry says, just been focusing on section three so much, but planning on going through some other practice questions. Yeah, again, look, whether it's Acer questions or some other practice questions, they're still practice questions and they're not developing skills, they're testing them. So, again, that's not a preparation strategy, it's a testing strategy. Um, yeah, so most of them reading widely. Okay, thank you for your honesty, guys. And look, you can see, right, that's not going to help you. So what, you need, what we need to do is scrap all of that. All right, get rid of all of that. And instead, what you need to start with is get strategic. Now, what I mean by this is that you need to have a very specific and planned out thought process when you're studying for this section. So as in being strategic, you can't use just intuition to try and feel your way through the passages and the questions. Question for you, who's been trying to use their intuition to figure out the answers for section one? Type in intuition if that's you, right? Because I know a lot of people do that. They're kind of like, I'm just going to feel out the answers, right? Yeah, John T. All right, so... <laughs> Tommy, Terry. Okay, cool. A number of you. Intuition. Yeah, that's right. And problem is, you don't have any intuition for session one, right? Because you haven't done this before. It's not something you naturally do. So your intuition is non-existent or it's terrible. So instead, we need to be strategic and specific. And because we don't have the... So, so because if you don't have the right strategies and specific techniques. You're going to be shocked by the material that comes up. 
it's going to throw you off, off balance and off center and your concentration will go and you'll be you know, panicking. And it's not a good section to, to have that happen because it's the first section and it kind of sets the tone for the whole day. And you'll find that you'll be going really slow, right? Trying to get through it, not understanding. You'll be rereading stuff, double checking, narrowing it down to two answers and then picking the wrong one. Right. And uh, it won't make sense. You know, you'll, you'll feel like a stranger lost in a weird land trying to figure out these obscure passages because you don't have the right strategies and the right approaches to pull it apart quickly and effectively. And that just leads to bad results. So instead, what you need to be doing is reading the stimulus material in a particular way so that it's it's uh, it's really familiar to you. So you get, get comfortable with the pass, with the types of stuff that comes up and you can sniff out all the details that you need, just like this doggy on the screen can sniff out you know, the bone that he's looking for. And you, that way you'll be able to pick out the, the distinctions, the similarities, the nuances, everything that the GAMSAT requires you to, the meanings, and be able to do it correctly and you'll see what other people don't. And in order to actually be able to do that, you need to spend some time reading these types of texts, right? But not just reading it because that's reading widely and that's pointless and, 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 and useless. Instead, write this down. This is the key. What I mean by this is you have a set of questions that you ask yourself. That's what I mean by a strategic approach, right? A set of questions that you ask yourself about the, the stimulus material that you're reading. And you do that in your study time. You don't read the, you, you apply this to, your, to the books. So, um, so that you're pulling it apart and understanding it effectively and you're able to actually use it. Now I can try and articulate this really well or what I can do if you guys want, I can show you what we give our boot campers. I can give you an example of what being strategic and what these questions look like so that you can do the same thing. Would that be useful? Let me know by typing it into the chat box. I mean, I can beat around the bush and try and explain it, or I can just cut to the chase and give you the good stuff that we give our boot campers so that you can see what it looks like to actually approach this strategically and do it correctly. If that would be useful, let me know by typing in yes. All right. Yes, lots of yeses coming through. Okay, cool. All right, great. Well, then... Uh, let me bring that up. Let me just uh, find where that is. All right, cool. Let's share the screen. So we're in the boot camp here. If you can see that, if you type in, uh, type in, uh, uh, I can see it. I'm getting bored of yeses. <laughs> I can see it. Yep. Okay, great. I can see it. Great. Okay, cool. So um, let's look at um, poetry because I know everybody loves poetry, right? It's everyone's favorite topic to study. <laughs> no, probably not. Um, so I'm going to pull out, actually, before I go there, look, look at it. So these are some of the genres you need to be addressing. So you got symbol. So there are two types of poetry, symbolic poetry and narrative poetry, nonfiction, cartoons, editorial cartoons, statements on when you get multiple statements on a dip on, on the similar topic, narrative fiction, drama, and then addressing timing as well are, are important things you need to be doing. Now, um, so what we'll do here, so this is how to interpret a narrative poem. Now, obviously, we don't have time to go through all of the things. So I'm just going to pick narrative poetry. And I'm just going to go through it with you guys and explain it. So like I said, I can beat around the bush or I can just get cut to the chase. So I'm literally going to read it off the screen and explain it to you so that you can take notes and be able to do this yourself in your study time. But make sure you're paying attention because I'm not sending this out later this is the stuff we give our paying member, members so make sure you're paying attention all right so how do we interpret a narrative poem although questions about poetry can seem daunting bear in mind that all gamsat section one questions can be answered based on the information provided in the passage or in this case the poem 
A general knowledge of literary terms and careful reading is sufficient to answer even the most daunting of questions. Now, isn't that the most reassuring statement you've ever read about Gamsa poetry? <laughs> it's all there. It's all there in the poem. You don't need to have a whole you know, knowledge of poetry history. You just need to be able to pull it out of what's in, in, the, in the poem. So continuing. After quickly reviewing the Gamsat questions, read the poem twice. The first reading reveals the persona, antagonists, and peripheral characters, as well as the central conflict of the poem. You will also note striking images, um, unusual use of diction, repeated uh, words and refrains, and stylistic techniques the author uses. So right there, you're gonna, you know now that you're going to have to read the poem twice and do separate things on each reading. Now, over time, you're going to blend these two readings into one. But to start off with, in your, on your first reading, as you read the poem below the first time, uh, ask yourself a few general questions. And here you've got a few of the questions. So what is the subject matter of the poem? What do you find striking about the poem? What is the persona, et cetera, et cetera? A bunch of questions to ask yourself. And then there's a poem for you to practice on. And then narrative poems such as I Heard a Fly Buzz When I Died by Emily Dickinson tell a story or depict an incident, meaning, as with all narratives, is derived largely from determining what happens in the poem, to whom it happens, and why it happens the way it does. This can be articulated in the simple formula plot plus character equals theme. And so right there, we've turned poetry interpretation into an equation, into science, right? How good is that? Plot plus character equals theme. Now, I didn't give you any background on this, because, but this, this isn't something I'm, I created, right? I didn't create this, this process. This was created by our section one, one of our section one specialists. And now when we met our, this particular section one specialist, she told us that she is a savant at literature interpretation. Her gift is being able to, to, to demystify the art of interpreting literature and turn it into a science that you can follow step by step. And this is literally it, right? Just turned into an equation. And let's continue. As with other forms of narrative literature, determining the central character who may or may not be the speaker or persona of the poem and the plot, including the central conflict and its resolution leads to a better understanding of the purpose of the, or the theme of the poem. Your first reading should re reveal a great deal about the meaning of the poem. As poems are cryptic, readers must read for and question themselves about relationships and associations. Asking a few common sense questions can work wonders when it comes to understanding the poem. Consider the following questions and answers pertaining to I heard a fly buzz when I died. So then our section one literature savant, she shows you exactly how to interpret that poem, how to answer these questions and how to be thinking about it. And then just briefly, the, uh, the second reading with practice, you should develop the ability to conduct the first and second reading simultaneously. Initially, however, read the, the, the poem a second time to determine the mood or tone or, and the author's attitude towards the subject matter. And then she continues talking about the second reading. But can you see that you're, when, you, when you're applying this approach, you're actually developing skills of being able to pull apart a poem, right? This is how you need to be reading and studying in your section one study time, not by doing practice questions, but by applying this approach to poetry, to narrative poems. Now, obviously, you know, there's a, there, there are different approaches to each of the different genres. They have a different set, set of questions. But when, you, when you're doing that, you're actually developing skills that you can use on the day of the exam. Does that make sense? Let me know by typing into the chat box, right? Because this is how you can shortcut your study where you don't have to become a poet. You don't have to read a whole bunch of stuff or even use intuition, but rather you're being uh, um, strategic, you're being um, purposeful and effective with your preparation, right? That is how you do it, but you need to have an approach like that for each of the genres and you know, once you get rolling, that is how you make fast progress very quickly. In fact, that is what Sonu did. Sonu struggled with the GAMSAT. He did it once, messed it up. Then he applied this. 
And he said, hey, Dr. Tom and Marie, got some great news, received an offer from UWA Medicine. Um, your help and support has made all the difference. And I really appreciate your efforts in helping each student achieve their dreams. And Will applied this. Literally, he, he, he didn't have much time. He was in the same position as you guys, right? He was like, if you're doing March, he was about in the same position. It's about four weeks, probably even worse. It was about four or five weeks out. He was working part-time and also doing a diploma as well and studying for the GAMSAT. So he was a busy guy, but he used this approach and applied it to poetry and long nonfiction passages. So only two genres and ended up increasing his mark by 12 points for section one in only a few weeks of applying this stuff. So that's what's possible, guys. If you can you know, develop that kind of a study process for yourself, that's how you can make some serious progress in the time you have left. All right, but I've got a question for you now. I'm curious, what's been the hardest part for you in your section one preparation? Let me know. I've been talking for a little while, but I want to know about you and what you need help with. So what's been the hardest part for you in your section one preparation? Let me know by typing that into the chat box so that I can, uh, I can help you as much as I can. What's been the hardest part for you in your section one preparation? Nura says time machine. I'm not quite sure what that means. You have to be more specific. Uh, Bella says probably what you've been describing with how to break down the stimuli. Yeah, spot on, Bella. I think that's the, the truth is you kind of nailed it for everyone. <laughs> I think most people are probably struggling with that, right? That's a really good, like a uh, insightful answer there. Terry says having a strategy. Yeah, you don't have a strategy, so you're all over the place. Zara says, getting through the long passages and sorting through all the information, so time. Well, write this down. Timing in section one is a factor of two things. Number one is how quickly you read in general. So if you're reading something that you enjoy, you're probably fast, right? So for most of you, that's not the problem. It's not that you generally read slow. It's that it's the second thing that's most that, that affects you. It's how quickly you can understand what you've just read. Because you, you, like, you're, like you're saying, here's Zara, you're, you're not understanding it. You, the stuff, stuff's not making sense. You've got to reread it, sort the information. And that takes a lot of time. And that is the biggest aspect that sucks up time and affects your timing. And the way to address that is by being strategic in the way we just spoke about, developing those strategies so you can pull it apart quickly. Lexi says, no target question practice. Well, no, not quite, Lexi. Like pra practice questions don't develop skills, they test them, right? So doing practice questions isn't going to actually help you to improve that much. It'll just help you to get feedback. And we're going to talk about this in a second, to get feedback on what to address next. Uh, Kudar says, understanding the poem. Melina says, poems and vocab. We're going to talk about vocab in a sec. Uh, Yaxin says, vocab and timing. Brianna interpreting the meaning of stimulus. Uh, Afan says, when reading large text, when finish reading, reading it, I tend to forget half of the stuff in it because it's so convoluted. Yeah, totally. Leela says, uh, so far, the time seems the most challenging. Yeah. Uh, Nura says, residing, reading super fast and answering fast. Yeah, we just spoke about timing. Beck says, agree with Bella, need uh, to learn to read faster. Well, it's not about reading faster, right? It's about interpreting faster, figuring out what priorities are when studying and uh, sometimes struggling not, struggle not to pick my own point of view instead of the author's. Yeah, totally. So that, that again comes down to being able to have that strategic approach, be able to understand what the author's talking about. Great. All right. So we've, we've talked about some of those, but there's still more. And the next bit is we've talked about get strategic. The next thing is to multiply your effort. Because vocab is a big problem for a lot of people. Who's worried about vocab in section one? Type in me if you're worried about vocab. I know a couple of you have already mentioned it. All right. 
And the way that this uh, presents itself in the GAM set is two ways. Either number one, there's complex you know, vocab throughout the passage and, you're, and, and, and you know, one word can change the meaning and you're like, what the hell does that mean? So that's the first way. And the second way is that the answers, you might have, the, the, there might be four options and each option is a one word answer and each word is more confusing than the next, <laughs> right? And you're like, what does that actually mean? I don't know which answer to pick because I don't actually understand the answer. So that's the second way that that presents, right? Now, I've got a quick test for you. I've got simple in inverted commas because it's not very simple. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to match the word with the meaning. So you might type in 1A. So what type in 1 and then the mean, the, which meaning you think is accurate for that word. So I want you to do that into the chat box. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. So what you're doing is you're typing in 1A or 2B or whatever you think is the meaning for the word. Type that into the chat box and I'm going to give you 30 seconds starting now. I'm going to have a drink in the meantime. What do you reckon are the meanings of those words? If you don't know, type in, I don't know any of them. Um, but if you do, give it a go. What do you think it is? Do as many as you can. Whoops, what's going on here? Ah, I started the timer again. All right, I think, well, did it end? It would have ended. All right, a couple more seconds. Three, two, one, done. All right, so tricky without context. Yes and no, because the meaning is always the meaning without the context, Jasmine, right? But I get what you mean. Um, all right, so let's go through some of these. Some, thank you for your honesty, the people who said, I don't know any of them, which was a bunch of you. Um, some of them, Terry's put 1D, correct. One is D, 1D. Um, Yakan said 5B, that's incorrect. It's in, in fact 5F. Um, Jacob, 1B, that's incorrect. It's 1D. <laughs> Afan says, I lost as soon as I read abjure <laughs> yeah exactly right and, and these are words that we pulled out of like gamsat sources um so you know i'm just going to read out the answers and you guys can see if you got it correct so it's 1d 2a 3b for barry 5f for frank s uh, sorry 6e for echo and 4c for charlie so yeah most of you got it wrong but look, isn't that insightful, right? Because here's the thing: if you're voc, if you're struggling with vocab, you might you might find that you can't answer the question because you're like, "Damn, I don't know that word," <laughs> or you won't understand the whole passage because it'll be like all these convoluted words, and you'll feel like it's a, a different language. And uh, yeah, and that just leads to a bad score, right? Which isn't very good. On the other hand, if you can improve your vocab and do it effectively and quickly, then you can actually enjoy the process because as I've been saying, it's actually quite enjoyable. I think section one can be enjoyable if you're making progress and understanding what's going on and you'll be able to answer the questions to put it simply and feel as chuffed as this guy on the screen, right? And, uh, and be able to rub it into your friends when you beat them and you get into medicine, right? <laughs> Maybe you won't rub it in, but you're going to be very happy and, uh, and celebrating. Now, the problem here is that the way that most people do it, they use vocab lists and flashcards and vocab lists and flashcards suck, right? They're, frankly, they're like, they're like a bad solution for, because we just don't have, most, most people just don't have a better one. So they're like, you know, I'm just going to memorize this crap and try and uh, try and I'm going to write it down, try and memorize it. But what happens is you make this huge list and you never look at it, right? So that was a waste of time. Or maybe you look at it once or twice and it feels like it's for the first time every time you look at it. 
And maybe you remember some of them, but then none of the words come up when you actually get into the, into the exam. So the whole thing was a waste of time. So what you need instead is my GAMSAT vocab multiplier. The main problem with flashcards is that flashcards and vocab lists focus on content, right? Here's the word, write down the definition, read it over and over. And it's just one tiny part of comprehending what, a, what the word means. And it works for some, but rarely. And language works in context, right? So as in, in the context in which the word is used. Now, for example, plumbers use a particular vocabulary to communicate with other plumbers in a plumbing context, right? Lawyers and scientists, doctors, miners, and teachers use certain vocabulary in their different work settings, you know, words that relate to specific fields of study or skills and tasks. So knowing how a word is used, the context, and a couple other factors mean you'll actually remember the word, how to use it, and a bunch of other related words as well. And that's where the multiplier effect comes in. And that's exactly how this works, right? Because it was the, 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 the vocab multiplier was developed by my student support coach, Alex. And Alex has a background in teaching. And so you can do it on your own, but I'm going to give it to you in a second. But what we've been doing in the boot camp is we've run a, boot, a, a vocab multiplier challenge where my boot campers have, have come together and they've learned over 90, they've, done, they've applied this to over 90 words. And as a result, whole bunch, like at least three to four times extra words have come out of it. So if you do the numbers on that, it's, it's pretty impressive. But essentially the way it works is, and I'll take you through this in a second, is you do a specific exercise on a new word that you're trying to learn. And as a result of this exercise, you know much more about it, but also you learn at least three or four other words. And oftentimes as much as eight extra words for no extra study or effort, just from what you did on that exercise, which is actually quite fun to do. So meaning that you can multiply your efforts three or four or more times. So here it is on the left, right there. Okay, so what it is, it's a, it's a table. You fill that in for the word. You fill in the word, how it's used, the root word, the definition, using it in context, synonyms, antonyms, and an example sentence. And when you do that, you can, if you, let's say you, you apply it to five words, you will actually be able to understand 15 to 20 words as a result of this. And I'll show you an example of how this works. So Alex applied this to the word sinuous. Right, so then I've we've turned this into a you know a word doc that you can use. So the word is sinuous, and the context is that she took it out of uh, the first stanza of the poem Kubla Khan in the poetry section in the boot camp under recommended texts, and uh, and and it was used as and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills. So the usage is an adjective root word. Latin origin. Now, the good thing about the root word is that often, actually, that's a bonus tip here. Learning root words is a huge advantage because one root word has one core meaning, and it's the foundation of so many words we use. If you know the root word, it can give you a big hint as to what it means. So, for example, try means three as a, as a combining form used in words like trio, triangle, triacid, triatomic, trilogy. So when you see these words, even if, it, if, you, if you don't know what they mean, you know it has something to do with three. And then you can use the rest of the sentence to read in context and understand it. So that's where the multiplier effect is really taken hold, right? Because you all of a sudden, because you know the root word, you know so many other words. Then you use it in context, actually understand it word definition, and you got synonyms, again, where the, where the multiplier effect comes in, because you get synonyms, if, for those who don't know, it, it just means similar other words, other words that are similar to it. And then below that, you can't see it on the screen, is uh, antonyms, and those are the opposite words. So all of a sudden, you're learning so many other words, but you're understanding context and so much more. 
And that's what we're doing with our boot campers over the last 10 days to help them learn. They've applied it to over 90 words as a group and as a result, learn hundreds. Um, but I've got a question for you. With, uh, why do you think people struggle so much with GAMSAT vocab? Type that into the chat box. Why do you reckon they struggle with GAMSAT vocab? Unsure where to start, says Beck. Bella says, may not be their first language, yeah. Nura says, I don't know. Thank you for your honesty there, Nura. Terre says, apologies if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Ter Terry. Uh, focusing on section three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, make, that makes section one into a big problem if you if you start focusing on section three. Um, Zara says, it's not our everyday vocab. And that's spot on, Zara. That's 100% true. That's the thing about games that vocab. They, they, they're putting in words that you don't, often use right kuda says using the the list of words like me using the list of i don't know what that means sorry um lena um may not speak english at home sure that might be part of it but i think there's a lot of in native english speakers who also struggle with it kirsten says it's not everyday language and we are not exposed to this type of writing regularly spot on amanda words not sound like the meaning yeah for sure um, Lexi says, uh, they don't have the right habit of learning new vocabulary. Not easy when English is like third or fourth language, says Afan. Yeah, totally. Um, awesome. So save your questions. Uh, ask me that one at the end. That's a good one. Um, awesome. All right, cool. Yeah. And so there, that, that's how you can approach it and you can address it using the vocab multiplier, right? That's, uh, that is the most effective way to multiply your vocab uh, in the time that you have. But so far, so moving on, so far we've covered getting strategic by using the right um, techniques and questioning process when you read something. Second was about multiplying your efforts with the vocab multiplier. And the third is to build the muscle. And this is all about how to develop your skills and use practice questions. Right, because the next the next step is you you know that you've got to have these 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 strategies, but how do you apply? How do you actually get good at that? Well, what you've got to do is build your section one muscle by using the questions in a specific practice questions in a specific way. Now, I know that a lot of people you like to use practice questions, but they use them frivolously, waste them and don't get anywhere because they don't increase their scores or they just fluctuate. And that's because if you don't build your section one muscle, you could be going down, you could be on the wrong track, spending all your time doing the wrong things and not getting anywhere, ending up somewhere you don't want to be. Like look like this uh, hazardous material location. And uh, if you... Don't build that muscle in the way I'm going to show you in a second. You won't know if you're improving or getting worse. And if you are getting worse, there's no way to change it. And that is an epic waste of time, money, and effort on your preparation and ultimately delaying the beginning of your career and possibly preventing it from starting altogether. But instead, you could be on the right track, headed towards your goal score rather than towards a dead end. And if you veer off track, you quickly notice it and change directions, always improving, building momentum right up until the exam. And you can, you'd be making the most of the time you spend studying, no matter how much time you've got left, you'll be using it effectively and the effort pays off and, and you know, you're achieving your goal. And the way you do that is you apply our read formula. And this is a process that we develop that allows you to effectively study for section one, to effectively use the practice questions, but develop the skills to be able to answer them. Now, I put in those kind of, it's not just read, it's R-E-A-D, right? So write this down. This, this is an acronym and it stands for, the R is revise the lessons. So as in the lessons from the, from the ones that I went through for, uh, for poetry, 
So revise those lessons. So let's say you're, you're working on poetry, right? So you revise the poetry lesson. Then E stands for exercise the skills. So that means you apply those different um, questions and that strategy to poems, right? So an 80% of your study time should be applying those, those, those strategies to the material, to, to books and poems, etc. So just to recap, R is revise the lessons, E is exercise the skills, A is assess your progress. And this is by using practice questions as feedback to give you feedback on how to actually, what to actually work on next. And this is 20% of your time. And the D out of, from read stands for double down on problem areas. So when you do the assessing your progress, you'll figure out what the problem areas are and then you need to address them. And that might mean going back to the lessons, to the different skills, what have you, um, and actually working on them. But the problem here is that when you do practice questions, especially the ASA ones, people get stuck on because they're like, how do I actually know why I got this wrong? Right? Who's done ASA practice questions and gone, how did, why did I, how did I get this wrong? Like, what do I need to do here? So D was double down on your problem areas. Yeah, thanks, Bella, <laughs> jumping in there. Um, because what's really important when you're assessing your progress, the A, right, when you're doing practice questions, they are there to give you feedback on what you need to work on next. So you need to understand why you got something wrong or why, even why you got it right and did you get it right for the right reasons. Now, ASA are terrible at doing this. They don't give you an explanation or if they do, it's one sentence. But what makes practice questions useful and valuable is if you can turn them into lessons on how to answer the questions correctly in the future or what skills you need to work on next so that they, they give you guidance on how to improve. And that's why we do practice questions as a tool to help you grow and improve rather than a, than a stick to beat yourself with, right? And instead, you need to turn them into lessons. Does that make sense? Let me know by typing in yes, if that's making sense. If it's not, tell me, tell me where you're stuck and I'll explain it. But I want to make, I want to be clear about this, that you need to be able to turn the questions into lessons, right? Because let's have a look at what that, what that, what that, let's look at what that means, right? Because like I say, like ASA are terrible at this. So, but if you're going to use the practice questions effectively, the best way to do them is turn them into lessons. Now, so what, what that looks like is what we did was we took, we took ACES questions and we gave them to our section one literature savant. And, and said, hey, can you turn these into lessons that our students can, you know, can, can improve based on, that they can take, pull, pull uh, effective things out of this to actually improve. And so that's what we have here. So what, I, what I'm going to share with you, again, I can beat around the bush or I can just cut to the chase and show you the stuff. Um, you, I'm working on ASA sample questions. Now, ASA have changed their the covers recently, you may have noticed. It's still the same content, it's just that they've made stuff look different. And it's just a different color, but the names are still the same. So this is the what used to be the blue, blue, the blue one, but it's called the sample questions. And so I'm, well, look, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through unit one so that you know how to turn the ASA questions into lessons for yourself. All right, so this is what we call our answers on steroids because they're like answers, but they're all like, you know, on steroids. They're all muscly and big and they're just bigger and, and, and better. Why well, don't they? Yeah, they're definitely better. All right, so I gave you the background. We gave this to our, our, our experts. You turned them into lessons. And so the way it works is we start off with... Hold on, let me just plug my computer in. See that my battery is dying. 
I didn't realize that it had unplugged itself. All right, there we are. All right, so what we do, so you'll need to get your own version of the ASUS sample questions. I can't share that with you, but you can just know that this is unit one. You can flick to that or you can just, you know, make a note for later. And so when we, we begin with a recap of the principles of interpreting that type of passage. And so this is a single paragraph um, passage and it's a nonfiction one. Okay, so um, bear that in mind. So candidates must first determine the focus topic of this single paragraph passage. Although authors do not always state the main issue overtly, when they do, they will state it in a topic sentence found typically at the beginning or very end of the passage. Now, are you guys seeing this? I didn't actually check. Can you see that on the screen? Type in yes if you can see it. Or no if you can't. Yeah, okay, great. So continuing. Um, here, Darwin states the focused issue in a topic sentence at the very beginning. Several writers have misapprehended or objected to the term natural selection. Candidates can pretty safely infer that the ensuing paragraph will develop some aspect of this apprehension slash objection, explaining it, examining its causes and or effects, arguing or agreeing, etc. Questions that follow will be based on these relationships in the final conclusions, if any the author draws. And so right there, if even if you didn't know how to interpret nonfiction passages, now you've just had a recap. And you can, you can start to apply this. Even now from attending this webinar, you can apply that to future single paragraph passages, right? You understand the principles and you can apply those principles more widely to other GAMSAT questions. And then we talk about the actual question itself. So you got the, obviously the, the answers there and then the key to answering this question. So how do we interpret and understand this particular question? So question one asks candidates to determine the fundamental nature of the misunderstanding. What is it that Darwin's critics object to? And more specifically, what do they accuse Darwin of doing or getting wrong? We find the answer to these questions in the second, fourth, and sixth sentences, which translated to everyday language read as follows. And then you've got, she shows you, you know, in the second sentence, that's what it means. And so she shows you how to find it the answers in the stimulus material right and that's what you've got to understand that you're finding the answers within the stimulus material and she actually shows you how to do that so you can develop that skill and do it in the future and then she goes through each option option a you know why it's correct why option b is wrong why option c is wrong and why option d is wrong so that you're doing it for the right reasons and you're developing the skills along the way and then she continues to section two. But the point is, right, you've got to, that's how you've got to be turning the practice. That's how you get the most out of the practice questions, right? And that then gives you the guidance on what to work on next in your 80% time where you're exercising the skills on the poems and et cetera. Does that make sense? Let me know by typing in yes into the chat. Does that make sense? Have I been clear there? I know there's a lot of you here with different backgrounds, so I want to make sure that I'm kind of uh, addressing as many of your ch challenges and questions as I can. Awesome. Lots of yeses coming through. Fantastic. All right. Now, this is what Jonathan Chan did. Now, a lot of you might relate to Jonathan. He did the GAM set a bunch of times. He actually said that, I mean, not, what was it, like 15% of you had done it more than three times, three or more times. John had done it, Four, four GAM sets, right? Which is pretty rough going. He was struggling. He was really struggling. He was also working full time running his parents' restaurant. So he was a busy guy. He was doing volunteer work as well. And, um, and then he, he applied what we're talking about here today and ended up writing. So I finally had the courage to check my email. I'm happy I did because I got an offer for, for Notre Dame. Thank you, Marie and Tom, for all your help and support you've given me through past camps. And a past camps is what we used to be called, we're now called ThankFlip. Um, I started this journey four years ago in 2016. Since then, I've sat the camps at four times and received three emails of death, but I can't explain enough how important and valuable the past four years have been in preparing me for med school. So for everyone still hoping to get in, persevere, guys. 
keep at it, keep improving, and you'll get there. And now if you're doing it for the first time, why not just cut to the chase and do it the first time, do the, what works the first time, right? Just like Gemma, right? Gemma did the GAMSAT once. She was studying at uni. I think she was doing a science degree at the, at, at the time. And she got into the University of Melbourne on her first attempt. And then she had to, she says here, she had to pull out for personal reasons. Then she said, thankfully, I have just received an offer from UQ to start over there next year. And so then she went back to Queensland and applied for UQ and got in there on the first go. So essentially got in twice on the first go. And Lauren Crocker, again, she got into UQ on the on her first attempt applying this stuff. She said, hi, Marie, just thought I'd let you know I got an offer from UQ today. So totally unexpected. Um, Rachel says, I've got a much clearer idea on how to analyze and interpret the questions and use the techniques in this boot camp. I can dissect the, and here's the key, I can dissect the lengthy passages and find the key info to tackle those questions. That's what's possible when you're applying these techniques. And Elise said, it really goes into the depths of how to quickly gain a substantive understanding of the passages, characters, themes, and ideas. And these are people who have actually applied this stuff in an extensive way in their preparation. So I've got a question for you right now. If you could apply all of this that we've been going through to your section one preparation, what difference would it make to your chances of becoming a doctor? Let me know by typing that into the chat box. If you could apply what we've talked about with the strategies, with the vocab, with the READ approach to developing the skills and uh, apply that to, to your section one preparation, what difference would that make to your chances of becoming a doctor? Let me know by typing it in to the chat box. Bella says, hopefully a positive difference. Interesting that you say hopefully. What are you, what are you not sure about there, Bella? Terry says, as my section one score is now my worst, it will take me into a 70. Yeah, awesome. So it will make all the difference for you, allow you to actually get there and get a great score. What about everybody else? We've got a whole bunch of you. What difference would it make to your chances of becoming a doctor if you could apply everything that we've been to now? We've covered a lot today. If you could apply it, what difference would it make? Lena says, a large difference because my section one score is currently holding me back. Nora says, hopefully you succeeded. All right, sounds like there are a couple of people who are really doubting themselves in this section. Sounds like there's some serious problems. Even with this, you're still doubting yourself, wondering whether you can do it. What, what are you worried about? What are you doubting yourself about, Nora and Bella and anybody else? But for others as well, what difference would it make to your chances of becoming a doctor if you can apply this? Afan says, huge difference because these key elements I can use now to succeed. Awesome. Zara says, would definitely improve my section one score, which is currently my lowest. And what about everybody else? Uh, Bella says, you get a lot of businesses and sources of info who promise this is the way to do well. So until I apply it and test it, I can't know. And you know what? That is very true. Because the thing is, you won't know 100% until you have actually sat the exam. The problem is, you won't know any of your preparation, is whether any of it's useful, unless you commit to it 100% and apply it and then get in, right? So you've got to make a decision at one point, what's going to be the best way for you to go. Now, at the moment, what you're doing, chances are you're doing a lot of those non-strategies, right? Which is not getting you there and you're struggling and that's why you came to the webinar. And now you're at a point where you've learned a lot of things that you know, you've been saying throughout that it makes sense, that you're following, that it'll be helpful. Now, you've, at one point, yeah, you won't know until you've sat the exam, but there comes a point before the exam where you've got to make a commitment 
to what you, how you're going to prepare and you've got to give that 100%. All right, you can't go 50-50 and go, oh, I'll be certain about it when the exam comes around because it's too late at that point. All right, you've got to make a commitment and jump in. Um, so uh, Yakna says, large difference, hopefully, because now I have an idea on how to tackle section one studying. Uh, Kirsten says, better understanding and comprehension of complex texts. Awesome. Simi says, yes, there is an element of self-doubt, but that's across the sections in general. Yeah, and I think, and she says, uh, uh, Simi says, I think so far within this workshop, I can see a difference in my study plan slash thoughts. I'm glad you, you brought up these techniques as I feel as though I have been testing my skills rather than developing. So moving forward, that will be a big difference uh, focusing on developing rather than practicing. Yeah, awesome, spot on. And look, there's self-doubt is normal, okay? Self-doubt is normal across not just section one, but all of them, and that's gonna, going to continue. But the thing is, you still need to make a commitment to how you're going to prepare and, 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 and go with it, right? Because that's the, the, the only way that the doubt will go is when you get the result and you get in, right? But you can't wait till then. You need to commit to it and keep moving from this point. But that's really cool. Let's talk more about self-doubt in the Q&A time. But it looks like for, for you guys that this will make a huge difference. It's made sense. And if you can apply it and apply it the, the way I've been talking about and, and use it on the day of the exam, then it will make a huge difference to your results and uh, and getting you into medicine which is awesome so here's what i want to do um in a second i'm going to do q a and so we can keep talking about self-doubt or other questions that you have um and that we can talk about up yeah other questions that you have plus remind me then and i'll show you how to um get a recording of the webinar um and, or, and the what was it the, the 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 reading list and the mini diagnostic exam um but first i'm going to answer some of the questions that we've been getting about our boot camp and then we'll talk about the rest of the questions um so the, our boot camp is designed to help you go from maybe you, you're doing it for the first time and you're struggling worried you know self-doubt going on not sure if you're doing it right how to do it right or maybe you've done it before and you've tried your best and you've messed it up and it didn't go how you wanted it to. And so we take you from that place to a place where you're doing the right things, where you're making progress and you know, you're, you're readjusting as you go so that you're on the right path, doing the right things, developing the right skills, having the support so that you get the result that you want. And that way you can get in as soon or sooner than you thought possible. And this has everything that I've spoken about today. You know, for section one, it covers everything that we've talked about today, plus a whole bunch more, and also sections two and three. And it covers everything that we've learned about GAMSAT preparation over the last 15 years that we've been doing this and helping over 50,000 people through our various materials. So the boot camp is if you're willing to do what I say so that you implement the steps immediately and get the best results. Now, if you want to find out a little bit more about it, it's really simple. You'll have a quick conversation, you and one of my team members on the phone for 10 minutes. And all I'd ask you to do right now is open up a new web page and go to bit.ly forward slash thank flip and tell me a little bit about yourself on that form. And then we'll book you in and have a 10 minute conversation with one of my team on the phone. Now, if you're not totally committed to becoming a doctor as soon as possible and doing the work and doing the study and you just wanna have a conversation, then the boot camp is 100% completely not for you. No pressure at all, no offense meant, hopefully none taken. But in that 10 minute conversation, my team member is just going to have a, a quick look at you and your preparation and where you're at. They're going to ask you a ton of questions in that first 10 minutes just to help them to know if we can help you or not. Are we a good match or not? Is it worth us talking more or not? And if not, then hey, no hard feelings. They'll let you know politely and you'll just end it there. 
And if they think that we can help you, you'll tell them a bunch more about your preparation and what you're hoping to achieve with the GAMSAT. And then you'll talk about the boot camp and go from there. So right now, open a new web page, go to bit.ly forward slash thank flip and enter your details. Now the link's there on the screen. Now just to give you a heads up, we've only got room to talk to 12 of you. Um, that's because doing these calls takes my team away from helping our current students. And there's far more than 12 of you on the webinar here today. So those are gonna get snapped up pretty quickly. So head over to that URL, it's on the screen there. It's that bit.ly one, because the, the original one is like really long and convoluted. So I just shortened it into a, into a more presentable one. Um, and uh, you know what I'll do? I'll also paste it into the uh, chat for you guys. Um, awesome. So that is that. So now at this point, the webinar is now over. I'm going to open it up to Q&A, questions and answers. So whatever questions you have about your preparation, about section one, about the boot camp, about what to do next, um, type those in and I'll stay on the line to answer them. Awesome. All right. Uh, Terry says, how do I sign up to the boot camp? I kind of just want to go and study the rest of the evening. Can I just sign up now or do I have to wait till the end of the week? Yeah, so Terry, th thanks for asking. So what you need to do is have a chat with the team because the way we do things is more, is, is, is more personalized. So what we're going to do is have a chat with you to see if we can help you or not, how we can help you. And if you decide to join, we'll put together a personalized plan. So it's not just you kind of really nearly just picking stuff as you go. We work with you to create the most effective way for you to prepare so that you can make progress quickly, um, no matter how much time you have. You know, you might be working full time, going to uni now or next week um, or have kids or all of the above. And we're going to work with you to create the most effective approach so that you can get it done for March or September. So Amanda says, do you offer a GAMSAT course? Yes, it's the boot camp. And if you want to know more about it, Amanda, go to that link that's on the screen, bit.ly forward slash thank flip. And you can find out a bit more about it then. In terms of the cost, again, have a chat with the team. It goes for up to 18 months, depending on you know, what situation you're in. But you can stay in for up to 18 months. So you get up to three GAM sats. Don't use that many. And I don't expect you to. But we also include interview prep, et cetera, and a whole bunch of things. But have it, if you want to know more, go to that link, put your details down, and have a chat with the team. Um, Nura says, Thank you, Dr. Tom, for this wonderful explanation. You really helped uh, future doctors and the humanity by creating this work. You're welcome, Nura. Well done on coming along and, and engaging. Uh, Beck says, where can I find the reading list and analysis test? All right, thanks for asking, Beck. Um, so like that bit.ly link, the, these ones, the link to the reading list and the analysis test are, are super long and, 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 and difficult to, to, to explain. So what I'm going to do, thanks for asking, and I'm going to send it uh, via uh, tomorrow morning. I'll send out an email with the links to those things. So it'll be the reading list, the, the mini analysis test, which will, once you do it, it'll spit out, you know, what problem areas you need to address and also um, a recording of this. But thanks for asking for that. Nura, you're very welcome again. Um, awesome. Now, did I address those questions about self-doubt? So Simi was asking about that. I think Bella as well. If you let me know if you want any more clarification about that, because self doubt in the boot camp we have a big, big focus on mindset, because GAMSAT doesn't just it's not just about physics, chemistry, and poetry, right? It there's also this whole fearing of fearing failure. You know, what if I get this wrong? What does that mean about me? Who am I to want to become a doctor? All this it plays with your head, right? It really, it really kind of 
screws with you. And so a lot of people end up procrastinating because they avoid it or they end up underdoing their preparation or they, they're like one foot in, one foot out because they're like, oh, I'm still full of doubt. I don't know if I should do this, whatever. And so we help our members actually to, to work through that because if it, it can really undermine your preparation no matter what kind of, you know, section one, two, and three resources you have. If your mindset is wrong, if you're feeling doubt, then we need to address the mindset on its own before uh, at the same time as we address the skills because if you don't address the mindset you're just not going to get through the skills you're going to doubt yourself and not actually give them what, what it takes and i think that's what might be happening for a couple of you um zara says so i am curious as to what skill the gam set is testing by having hard vocab words in section one that we don't really use in our everyday life so well look medicine and you know medicine and being able to communicate with patients and your colleagues in english requires a level of understanding of the english language that's actually can be quite complex now obviously there are doctors you, we've all kind of come across who, who who aren't quite there but when the medical schools are selecting future doctors, they want to make sure that you have a strong command of the English language and, you know, vocab, different words allow you to more creatively and effectively communicate and express yourself as well. Right. So those are the reasons why they have those vocab words in there. Any other questions? All right, so Terry, you're going to be, you're a paramedic, West Queensland. You can get a call at any time until Thursday morning, and I should be free. But all right, yeah. <laughs> all right, so Terry, here's the thing you've got uh, the time booked. You know, they're going to call you at that time. But if you can't, you know, if something happens like right before it, let us know. Um, otherwise, they'll call you and so answer that. It'll be a, a short, you know, maximum of 30 minutes. That's why we have that 30 minute time slot, maximum of 30 minutes. And then you can go from there, maybe book a time when you're not on call. But yeah, you'll be, uh, we've got a lot of paramedics in the boot camp. Paramedics, we got, actually, we've got one guy who's actually a, doing his, his first kind of trainee internship thing. And he's doing the four nights on, four nights off. But yeah um awesome so what else have we got coming through here uh kirsten you're very welcome i'm glad it was valuable zara said makes sense awesome all right cool look if there's no more questions if you liked what you heard today if you got something out of it if you learned something if you're entertained maybe then say something positive and share our stuff on you know on on, on in the groups or with your friends, you know, where you're, when you're online, you know, share what we've, we're doing and, um, you know, say something positive. That would be much appreciated. Um, or if you know, if you didn't like it, you know, say something negative, be honest, <laughs> but chances are you probably liked it. And if that's the case, you know, spread the word and that'd be, that'd be cool. Um, awesome. Okay. Well, thanks everyone. Looks like there's no more questions. In that case, uh, let's wrap it up. Well done, everyone, for coming along and st sticking it out till here. And uh, good night, and I'll see you next time.